Welcome back, folks. Technivorous here. If this is your first time here at the channel and you'd like to become a Technivore, I invite you to tap that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. That way you don't miss anything 3D print related here on the channel. Today, we're going to be doing what's known as the hot end fix to our Creality Ender 3 version 2. This includes inserting a length of Bowden tube into the hot end itself. Along with a washer, we will print from any material we have laying around. And yes, PLA works just fine for this. We will also need a tool to measure the length we need to cut, which you can find on Thingiverse or at the link below. Before we get into the actual how, you may be asking yourself, why would we do this? Well, this is going to help out a lot down the road when switching between filaments and will help to ensure we end with far fewer clogs or jams in the hot end. This will be beneficial when we get into printing higher temperature materials such as ABS or particulate filled filaments such as wood. Now, trust me when I say doing this now will save you no end in headaches later. In order to do this fix, we need to remove the hot end fans or shroud in order to complete the project. But first, we will need to download these objects from Thingiverse. So let's jump right over there and grab the items we need. This is the object we're looking at right here. This is going to measure the length of the Bowden tube we need to put in the hot end. And this is the washer that we're going to print. And like I said, you can print that washer in PLA just fine with no issues or problems whatsoever. So we're gonna go ahead and download this. And then what we're gonna do is bring it over into Kira, get it all sliced up and ready to print. So it only takes a minute, it's a pretty small file and it won't take too long to print either. We're just gonna kinda of throw it in here, slice it up real quick and then we will have a few minutes to wait while we print the file. I think I'll speed that up for you to save time in the process and here you have both of them STLs the hot end and the spacer and we're gonna go ahead and move those so they get unzipped and I will drag and drop them into Kira from here so I'm gonna have to clear my build plate first jump over to prepare delete the tower I was using and now here we have it now don't click on this uh, hot end tool version 2 that is not the right scale obviously you want the one that says version 1 and you want the spacer as well. You can print them both at the same time with no support. You shouldn't really have any problems. I did have a little stringing on mine, but that's one of the things we are also working to prevent with this fix. And it wasn't enough to actually bother me as far as uh, causing a tolerance difference in the tube we're going to be cutting using this spacer. So go ahead and slice them up. Get that oriented the right way there. Hit slice and we will transfer them over to our file here in just a moment and then slide them onto the printer and get them up and running.
So here are some of the tools we're going to need for this. We're going to need a piece of Bowden tube. I'm going to be replacing the whole length of my Bowden tube as well as using Capricorn tube for the fix itself because I find it works really, really well. It's super reliable and really, really low friction on the filament inside of it. So it leads to a little bit cons more consistent prints for me. And I try to upgrade all my machines with cap tube. Um, and if you have cap tube, you will probably have one of these as well. This is a handy dandy Bowden tube cutter. And we will be using this, although you can also use a straight blade or just a plain old razor blade. However, be careful. The other things we're going to have on hand are the parts we printed a minute ago, which is our measuring device and the little nut that's actually going to go inside there between the tube and where we screw in the connector for the other Bowden tube. Um, you're going to want to make sure that this guy is cleaned out in there. If you have to, take either your uh, filament cutters or your straight edge and clear away any debris inside there. Basically, you want to make sure that you can fit at least a piece of filament in there smoothly without really having any issues. So that said, we can move on to the next step. And I have preheated my machine so I can remove the filament, after which we can turn it off and continue from there. But we will start with pushing a little bit in and then pulling it out. And we'll just remove the spool all together for now. Once that's done, we can power down the machine. And we can actually wait for it to cool off entirely before moving on to taking off the hot end cover. Now I've turned my machine a bit to get a little bit better look at what we are doing. We're going to go ahead and remove the screws in the back here. like we're having a little bit of an issue with that cover being brittle but that's okay because we have another one we can put on let's remove this because it's going to be in the way here get i'm going to need a pair of pliers that's all right the original blue plastic that i used when i installed that case was uh, some pretty cheap stuff that was pretty brittle. So let's go ahead, now that we've removed the, the screws back there, let's go ahead and just get to the hot end here and we'll replace that part in just a moment. So the first thing we're going to do here is pull this blue plug. Maybe, in theory, there we go. Want to hang on to that. That's what keeps us from being able to remove the Bowden tube here. And we want to go ahead and remove that now by pushing down on the white plug on top as we pull the tube upward. It doesn't seem to want to be coming out, so let's go ahead and grab our wrench. start by removing the coupler instead here. Quite dusty in there. That's disgusting. Might as well clean that out while we're in here. Get all that nastiness out of the way as well. So, all right, there we are. And you can see I've already had some stuff backing up in there and that is pretty gooey and gross. Um, we're gonna go ahead and clip that off and I don't care that it's not straight because I'm not using this tube, but I don't wanna yank that back through the coupler because I am using the coupler. 
Um, so now we can remove that and we can remove it from this side as well and over here I'll just unscrew it and remove it from both of these and we can feed it back through there the tube that we're going to use but again first I want to take this coupler and it's easier to get the coupler if you take the blue piece off note that these are two different sizes the smaller size is for the extruder side and now I have my replacement I'm going to be using here so we'll go ahead and slide the smaller side on get it in there as far as it'll go then replace the blue nut there and then I think we will for cord management purposes, feed the tube back through. And I'm just kind of pinching, trying not to deform the tube. I'm trying to it's not too difficult once you get it in there. It comes through pretty easily. And we will screw this back in over here. Now, for the inside of the tube, that's where this piece comes in. So this is the piece we cut earlier. We know it's straight on both ends and it's the perfect length. We're going to go ahead and basically just insert it straight into there. And we're going to put this little washer right on top of it. We're going to push down on it. And then we will screw this guy back in. And when it's all the way screwed in, that little piece should be pretty flush with where we want it down there. That's pretty good. Let's get our wrench out, tighten it up a little bit further. Make sure that it's pretty much as far as it'll go. So turn until you get just the right amount of resistance there, and now we can reinsert our new cap tube up top here. So we'll put that to right there. Inside here, it should be meeting with that washer we printed, and then on the other side, there is a nice length of Capricorn tube. We'll go ahead and plug this up. Now once we get the hot end back on, we should be good to go as far as printing materials such as ABS or wood materials without clogging. So let's turn this guy on and we'll see what we get. And here it is, post hot end fix. Let's fire it up here, get some of this mess cleaned up a little bit. I don't think I put too much pressure on the bed, so I'm not really gonna bother le leveling it. We need to throw some filament in here, get a little test print going and see if we did the job we wanted. Now, the nice thing about this is it's pretty forgiving now that it has that tube in there. Um, I can go in between ABS and PETG and not have any issues as far as it melting up into the hot end. What would happen before this fix is with those higher temp materials, sometimes the hot end itself would start to warm up and the plastic would begin to liquefy in there and it would cause it to become stretchy there. Uh, which can lead to all sorts of issues when changing to another filament because if there's still filament locked in here and you put in some PLA and try to run it out at 240 or excuse me 220 but that is rated for 240 or higher it's not going to come out because it's not going to reach its melting point and you're going to have clogs and issues like that. What this does is forces the filament to retain its shape and not sort of fill out to the inner shape of that hot end itself. It's basically a liner and it works really, really well. So let's check out a print here. And we're just going to get it going, see how it starts off printing. This was working really well with my profile before. 
and as usual with this fix I'll probably have to make some updates look forward to a video on how to adjust the e-steps on this machine because that will be the next thing we do before finalizing our ultimate our ultimate profile for this machine All right, smooth as butter so far. So on to the next step. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers. And so far, I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel. But... They are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.